Hello everyone! Welcome to episode 4, I think it's episode 4, of Speckled Red Knits. Um, this is a knitting podcast. I am a knitter from Cleveland, Ohio. I also do a little bit of sewing. Um, I sell uh, project bags on Etsy. Um, you can find my Instagram link below and also my Etsy shop link below. Um, and welcome to another another episode. Um, I think it's been a little while since I last filmed an episode. It feels like it was a long time ago. I have a lot of finished objects today, but here's the thing is that my one finished object was like a minute away from being finished on the last episode and I just didn't get it finished and I finished it like the next day before the podcast even went out and so um, I have a lot of finished objects so maybe that's why it feels like it's been a long time but like that one really um, that was uh, a long ways ago um, it's still super hot here in Cleveland it cooled down for a couple of days um, but it's really hot um, so I'm starting to knit sweaters again, but, um, I mean, I was always knitting sweaters, but, um, even just like knitting it right now, I feel like I'm never going to get to wear it because it's still 90 degrees. Um, I don't think there was a giveaway last week, so I don't think we have anyone to announce for that. There will be another giveaway this week, um, so just stick around uh, until the end of the podcast and you can find out about that. Um, I'm going to have a shop update uh, for my Etsy shop the end of next week, so August 28th, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast. Um, Let's get into some knitting. So my first finished object is what I was talking about in the beginning. It is my Vertices Unite shawl. Um, I had this all but finished for the last podcast. All I had to do was finish um, the I-cord edging. So if you knit any Stephen West patterns, you know that he likes to do um, the I-cord edge which gives you, let me just show real quick. You can kind of see it along the edge. It just gives you this really lovely, like very finished um, edging. And a lot of the times in his patterns, he has you do an incorporated I-cord edging where um, it's like at the beginning of every row, I think you, at the end of every row you slip three stitches and then you just knit them on the next row and it makes it like seamless within the piece but because this piece was um kind of knit in parts and you seam it as you knit it um, but you're like picking up a lot of stitches so you don't have one overall encompassing um edge that you're consistently working on so you can't do the incorporated I cord so you have to do it um, applied at the end and <laughs> I mean it's not like the worst thing in the world but it's definitely not any fun at all <laughs> to knit it at the end because if you're knitting it like within the shawl it takes what like two extra seconds and when you do it at the end it takes hours and hours to knit this eye cord but it's done now and I love this shawl so I know I've showed this so much um, so I'm not going to talk about it too too much um, but it's really quite large this one is bigger than the one I did before and the reason I think that is is because this is all super washed yarn and the one I knit before was uh, not super wash yarn at all. And so I think just in general, like super wash yarn, it doesn't like, it doesn't stick, the fibers in it don't stick to each other really. And so there's not a lot of support in the stitches. And so they just kind of droop, which is fine. I mean, it, it's just like, it's a very different fabric. And that's the reason why I think this is so much bigger than my other one. So let me just like, wrap it around my shoulders a little bit so you can see how big it is so um it like goes past my arms when I wear it like this um but 
yeah, I'm so excited to have this done. Um, it's been so hot that, I mean, I haven't really needed to even wear something to keep my arms warm at night um, or anywhere to wear it too. Normally in the summer, I always take a shawl to, um, it's called, well, it's an outdoor music, um, I guess it's a venue, um, and it's in the Cuyahoga Valley Parks. Well, it's just right outside. Well, it's within it, but it's not a part of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Um, but it's called Blossom, and it's the summer home of the Cleveland Orchestra. And normally in the summer, um, they have concerts uh, on like Friday and Saturday nights. I don't think they do them on Saturday, but and they're outdoor, and so it's like this beautiful venue. I think it was built in the 60s, and there's this huge hill um, behind it, and you can get tickets to, they call it the lawn, and you just like sit on the lawn, and you can bring a full picnic, like a legitimate picnic. Like we bring a wagon sometimes, and you can bring wine and alcohol, and like they don't really care. They have like regular concerts there too, um, and you obviously you can't bring in alcohol, but I don't think they're super worried about like the Cleveland Orchestra crowd getting rowdy. The point of that story is that normally when I finish a shawl in the summer, I get to bring it to Blossom with me on, um, on the weekend and I get a little bit of wear out of it in the summer, but they canceled all their concerts before, um, I think probably even before May, um. So that hasn't happened, and I haven't really been able to wear this. But I think when it gets cold, I'll probably wear this a lot in the winter. I normally, in the winter, wear a shawl um, that just, like, always goes with my coat. Um, I just wear it as a scarf because they're super warm. And I think this will be a good one. I like that it's very, very colorful because um, that way I won't get lost in the snow. Uh, well, it's just a little cheerful, you know. Uh, we get winter pretty hard in Cleveland. Um, so it's just like something that even when it's like terrible weather out, it'll make you feel happy. So uh, I will put a project page on Ravelry. Um, before this podcast goes live, I'm going to make a, a group a speckled red group podcast page on Ravelry which people have been asking me to do for months and I just haven't done but I'm going to do that and I will put all the details about this on Ravelry um I'll list all the colors and I won't talk about that again for like the fifth time on here um but yes this is a finished object and I'm I'm so excited to have it done this color well, all of the colors are just so beautiful, and I'm really happy to have this. This all all of the yarns I I used for this were all stash yarns that um, were just so beautiful on their own, and I never used them um, because I wanted to find the right thing to use them for. And I'm so glad that I I knit them all into this shawl because it's so special, and it smells really good, and it's really soft. Anyway, this is a finished object that I'm super excited about. So my next finished object um, is something that had kind of been languishing. It's this pair of socks. Um, I don't really ever like just sit down and knit socks. Like it's it's not something that's kind of on my knitting schedule. Um, I just kind of have them just to have like something really easy to knit on. Um, I just do really basic stockinette socks. Um, and I had started these maybe uh, two or three months ago and I finished the one sock and I had just the ribbing done on the second sock and I just really wanted to finish it. Um, I, I don't like having projects hanging around like that that are halfway finished because um, then it, it's, I don't know, it, you have to like figure out what you're doing um, again when you pick it back up because it's been a while. Which I guess doesn't really apply to socks, but it was just kind of annoying me that I had one sock finished and one sock that wasn't um, because like I have this one sock that I could wear, but I don't have the other sock to wear it with. And normally in real life, I don't really care about matching socks, but when they're knitted socks, 
that's different. So this colorway is from uh, Backyard Fiberworks. I'm not sure if she still dies. I think um, I bought the yarn a while ago and it was actually rescued yarn from um, <laughs> I knit that um, the tiny tassel shawl which is just like a one skein project and then it's just like a a, tri a very small triangle shawl and you do the increases um, down the middle and this was like years ago that I tried to knit this and I remember it was when I was working like one college summer I was working at this outdoor pool and I would get to knit all the time I was basically getting paid to knit except it was minimum wage so it wasn't really that much um, but I think I was just like distracted and I don't know what I was doing I was still like kind of new to knitting shawls at all because um, I mostly knit cardigans and sweaters before I even knit a shawl so I wasn't super familiar with the increases and I ended up so it's just supposed to be like a shallow triangle and it ended up like it was fine at the beginning and then it the whole thing just like curved to the side and it looks so bad um, so I, but I love the yarn I, I really don't know what color this is called um, but I love the yarn and so I rescued it. Um, I did, when I undid the yarn, I believe I soaked it so that, um, it wasn't so, like, all kinked up. Um, but I think it's just like a, I don't think it's 75-25, I want to say it's 80-20, um, merino nylon, and it's super washed. Um, I really like the 80-20 base compared to the 7525 because it's plumper um, and the, the 7525 feels really flat to me so I never I very very rarely buy um, 7525 I prefer if I do buy it with nylon in it which typically I don't I typically buy the single space um, if I'm buying indie dyed yarn um, I buy if I'm buying it with nylon I try to buy the 8020 so I'm assuming that's what this was um, so yeah, it's just like this really lovely pink color. The toes I did in, um, this lovely Madeline Tosh, I did the heel in it too, this Madeline Tosh colorway, it's called, um, Pink Miss, Pink Miss Smoke Tree, or Pink Smoke Mist Tree, I don't know, it's some combination of those words, um, I actually looked it up, there's a tree called this Pink pink something tree and it's really lovely but the colorway is so beautiful oh my gosh this is like oh, let's just look at that um the toe color is uh it's just so my color and I really I really want to knit a sweater in this colorway because it's just like a shade of pink that I love I really love dusty pink so it's kind of my thing I guess um I think it just goes really well with red hair which is funny to me because I've heard people say that redheads shouldn't wear pink, and I think it's like the most flattering color on me. Um, but yeah, I think I think a sweater's quantity of this um, colorway is in order. Although Madeline Tosh, I think they're like out of some bases right now, and I would probably want it like a DK base. Um, and I don't think they have that right now. So when they do have their bases replenished. I think maybe I'll buy a sweater's quantity of that yarn. Um, but these are finished now, and I'm excited to have them finished. I don't think I talked about the heel. I do a heel flap and gusset sometimes. I don't really like doing it because it's annoying, and it takes so much extra time to do it compared to doing it after that heel. I mean, maybe it's the same, but it's just fussy because you have to knit the flat stockinette instead of knitting it in the round and doing that on like such fine yarn is annoying I don't know I do the reinforced heel so it's where you slip a stitch every other row um so you slip it one row is just all knits or maybe it's pearls I don't know it involves slipping stitches but what you end up getting is a heel that like this is it on the inside so you can see here's like regular flat stockinette and then here is the re 
forced heel where you get those floats from the slip stitches. So it ends up being a little bit thicker and apparently you're supposed to wear through it less. Um, I still think that depends on the type of yarn though because I have knit Jordan, my boyfriend, a pair of socks and no matter what I do, he still gets holes in them even if I do the reinforced heel. So I don't know. Maybe it works better with like sock yarn but I've just done it out of habit that when I knit a heel flap and gusset, I knit the reinforced heel. Um, the heel flap does fit a little bit better than an afterthought heel. So that's why I started knitting it, but it's so annoying, you guys. It's very annoying to do. I remember um, I had an American Girl doll growing up. I didn't have this one, Molly, um, but I read all of the books. Um, at the library. Uh, all the girls, the different American girls, had like a book set that went with them. And I remember she was um, like the World War II doll and all the girls in her class were going to knit socks for the troops. And they all um, were able to knit the socks up until they had to turn the heel and they all ended up upset and they ended up just not knitting socks and they took the tubes and they cut them open and they made blankets instead. And so every time I turn a heel, I just think that like a pat on the back for me because <laughs> I don't know, it was just this thing in my head that was really hard to do. Um, that I'm sure was hard for eight year olds to do, but probably not for adults to do. So anyway. Don't love knitting the heel flap and gusset, but it does work a lot better, fits a lot better. Um, I don't know how often I'll do it, but for right now I am doing it. And that's what I did on these socks. These finished beautiful socks. So my next and last finished object for this podcast is this entire sweater. I really buried the lead there. <laughs> with my socks. Um, so I I think I said I was going to cast this on on the last podcast or two podcasts ago and then I didn't. <laughs> um, but now I did and it's a finished sweater. So uh, I will put project notes on Ravelry. Um, and I will list the pattern in those project notes because I can't pronounce it. It is by a Canadian designer and it is um, a French name. And I'm, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. But it's a lovely pattern. So it's a DK weight pattern. And it's really not a difficult knit. You obviously do some short rows. Um, and then it's like every three rows you do a row of uh, pearl stitches so you get this nice little pattern. Um, I really like that on the sleeves you don't do the pearl stitch because I think it would be really bulky if you did the pearl stitch like that on there. Um, but I've knit this sweater before. I knit it um, in an indie dyed yarn too and I just really like the way it fit. It just fit very well. Um, like the the body is just a little bit oversized. When you look at the um, the pattern sizing, um, this is something I didn't do when I first knit sweaters, and I would always be a little bit bummed when my sweater turned out not the way I wanted it to. Um, and so what I'm talking about is that if you knit this pattern, what you wanna do is you wanna look at the recommended amount of positive ease that they list for the pattern. So this pattern has a lot of positive ease and I really like the way it fit on the model. And I, um, normally I wouldn't really check it, but I did with this sweater and it has a lot of positive ease. Like for um, like my bust measurement, I typically knit like the second or third size in. Um, and for this sweater, I ended up knitting like the fourth or fifth size in. Um, just to get that amount of positive ease because the model, I, I looked at the model and she looked like she was kind of like, like we had a similar like bust measurement and they had her knit the large, she was in the large size to get that amount of positive ease, which is not like the normal size I would knit. So I used to never do this when I knit sweaters. Um, there's actually this sweater that I love. I think it's by, 
I can't think, I can't even think of the name of it, but I can see it in my mind. And it was, it was this really beautiful cardigan. It had short row shaping at the back. Um, it was very, like a basic cardigan. And um, I didn't, I, I just looked at like the finished measurements and I picked the size that would give me my bust measurement, which I think is like a 37. Um, and that's not how the cardigan was supposed to fit. And so I, I wore it a lot, but like it was not, it, I didn't get like that style um, that it was supposed to be in the picture. So that's something that I've gotten a lot better about doing is looking at how much ease they recommend um, and deciding whether I want it to fit like that on the model. Um, but just like understanding the amount of ease that they put into a garment really helps you with, with deciding how you want it to look and how you want it to fit you. Um, so if you do knit the sweater, just know that to get that style, you, you probably will have to knit a different size than what you normally knit, which is fine. It's just good to know. Um, this also has this really cool hem. It's called a shirt tail hem. And I'm going to hold it up like this so you can kind of see um, how it's split. So it's not a split hem. You never actually split um, the stitches in half. You end up working short rows for like, I think it's like four inches. You knit four inches of short rows um, to get this uh, this shirt tail hem. And it's really nice. And it ends up rolling up a little bit because of the stockinette stitch, but I, I like that. So here's something funny that happened. So, you know, like on short rows, you have to, you're not knitting, like you're not knitting in the round, you're knitting flat. And so you have to be like, on the right side of the fabric to get it to work up, the stitch pattern to work up the right way. Um, so this this little bit right here, where it's stockinette, is actually supposed to be on the outside, not the inside, but I was on the wrong side of the road, I guess, when I finished with the short rows. And so I have this little bit of garter stitch on the outside instead. And it's supposed to roll up a little bit, and it does on the inside, and it does on the sweater I knit before, but. I don't know, I just get so confused with short rows. Um, because I knit a lot of cardigans originally, um, and cardigans don't do the short row shaping on the back typically, I just like, I, I'm i still kind of new, I'm familiar with knitting them, and, and I don't really knit shawls that have short rows, so um, they just confuse me, and I was just like confused when I finished the short rows and I don't even know how I would unpick this to get it on the right side. So I'm going to block it and see if it bothers me. And if it doesn't bother me, I'm not going to do anything about it. I don't think it will bother me. Um, but I'm really happy with this sweater. Uh, the, it fits really lovely. It doesn't have all the ends woven in, but it's still a finished object. Here's the thing is that I was going to weave in all the ends and block it, but then I want to show it on the podcast. So. I could have just woven in the ends, but I didn't. It will be blocked after the podcast. And, yeah, this colorway is called um, The Deathly Hallows, and it's by Madeline Tosh. I guess they talk about Madeline Tosh a lot. Um, but it's just this lovely, I can't, Tell, in different lighting, it's more green, and in different lighting, it's more yellow. I feel like right now, it's looking a little bit more yellow, like a really honey yellow, um, and it has little little flecks of different colors, and it gets these little peachy bits in here, which are really nice, too. Um, and I also just love that it was called the Deathly Hallows because I love Harry Potter. Um, but yeah, I bought a ton of Madeline Tosh yarn last year when they were having their inventory reduction sale because they were like changing ownership and um, this was the second sweaters quantity that I bought. So I've knit through both sweaters quantities and I've knit through some of the sock yarn. Um, I don't, I actually don't think I really have that much more. So I'm really happy a year from when I, well it, it'll be, I think I purchased it in September and then it took until December to actually get the yarn. Um, so I'm just excited to like have worked through some of that um, since last year because it, you know, indie dyed yarn is very special and to have a whole sweaters quantity with it, I just didn't want it sitting around. So I'm glad that I've worked through both of the sweaters 
quantities of that yarn. Um, and this will get blocked and the ends will be woven in. And I will put it away because it is so hot here. It really stays hot until like October, like end of October. And then it's sweater season, so. So now that I've talked about all my finished objects, which that's a lot, three, a shawl, a sweater, and a pair of socks, that's a lot of knitting since the last podcast, even though one was basically finished and one was half finished, but a whole sweater, that's kind of a lot. So I don't really have a ton of progress on the projects I'm working on right now, but I did cast something new on, and this is the Marshland sweater by Tin Can Knits. Let me just show it to you. So I'm not that far along in it. I'm holding it upside down. Um, but this is, um, yes, it's uh, worsted weight yarn, which it, the marshland is knit in. And it, um, let me show you the, pal the palette before I continue on. So here it too. This is the main color, it's called radish. Um, and then these are my contrast colors. So I like it. This color was a little bit different online. It was a little more, I mean, I guess this is pink, but it wasn't quite as red, but I still like it. Um, anyway, so this yarn is called um, Heirloom Romney. Uh, I'm a real sucker for anything breed specific. And it's by Fancy Tiger Crafts. And they actually just redid this yarn line. They had this color palette for a long time and they just redid the color palette and I still like the color palette of their new yarns but I don't know I just really love the old palette. <laughs> the new one is just very similar to like Brooklyn Tweed which I still like but I did buy a lot of Brooklyn Tweed like sweater yarn um, when they had their sale so I just I kind of have like a lot of that color palette um, and so I kind of had to scramble to get this old color palette. Um, and I'm happy I did because I do really like these colors. Um, I'm still a little bit not quite sold on this color though. I don't know. I just didn't want it to be quite so red. But I do still like it a lot. Um, this colorway is called uh, Cabbage, which I'm just a sucker for a good name too. Um, this one is a Sweet Pea, which is really lovely. Um, the Romney base I think has some gray in it. So you can kind of see that in this pink. You can kind of see um, like the, the heathered um, color. And I don't know. See, I like this a lot without the red. Um, I wonder if I added like a, a darker purple if I would like that better. I don't know. I'm probably not going to rip this out even if I don't like it. I would finish the whole object and then decide I don't like it and then rip it out. Uh, I think this colorway is called Gourd. Um, so this yarn is, is a worsted weight. It's kind of like a two-ply. It's not, um, there's not a heavy spin on it. Um, it is pretty wooly. Like, it's not soft when you feel it. I did knit a swatch of it, though, and it does, um, it does soften up a lot. Like, it loses a lot of its crunch. I think you'll find that a lot, um, with crunchy yarns like this um, that they soften a lot when you wash them and block them because typically they aren't washed before they're skeined. Like they're not washed with a wool wash like indie dyed yarn is. Um, so everything except let Lopi. I knit, I asked when I was in high school, I asked for some yarn to knit a scarf and I picked it out and it's, it's beautiful. Like the scarf is lovely. It's in uh, like three shades of purple and in like a cream color and I knit the herringbone pattern. So it's a herringbone stitch and it goes vertical, it's not horizontal. And it, it's a beautiful scarf and I have it, but Let Love Be is so itchy and it never softens, it never softens up. So I think it's fine for sweaters, but if you're knitting um, like a scarf in Let Love Be or just Love Be, just don't because I look at that scarf and I'm just always so bummed. Like my neck is itching thinking about putting it on. Um, 
and it's beautiful and I think what I'm actually going to do with it is I'm going to cut it and I'm going to make a pillow like a pillow cover out of it because it's so the colors are beautiful um but this definitely I mean it feels when you get it it does feel a little bit like you can hear it crinkling a little bit but it does soften up a lot um so I'm not super far into this I think I'm only on like the 20th row of the color work and it's it's a pretty substantial yoke. Um, I'm also not totally sold on the pattern. <laughs> I'm really excited about this project, as you can tell. Um, I just like was having a hard time finding a colorwork sweater that wasn't just like a two color colorwork sweater. Um, I picked out the yarn ahead of time. I just really liked the palette. And so I kind of uh, found the pattern after the fact, which I don't typically do. I typically find the pattern and then find the yarn. So. Um, I did give this a little steam block before I brought it on the podcast, um, because it, it's really, I mean, once it's blocked, it changes totally, but like this, it, it is pretty like scrunchy. Um, I mean, it's not like laying super flat, but that just happens with color work. Um, it is going to be super warm when it's done, like that it's going to be a super warm sweater. Here's my thing is I'm a little bit worried about this. So you're probably looking at the neckline and saying what the heck is happening and what the heck is happening is I don't know. They have you uh, just cast on and you pick up the ribbing after the fact, but this looks so wide that I'm really concerned that it's, it's going to be too wide, even with the ribbing on it. So, I don't know. Has anyone knit this sweater? Did you have this problem? I don't typically knit it like this, where, I mean, maybe this is just like the world saying I need to um, pick a different color, which I actually, I'm thinking about it. I feel like I should just rip, oh, I don't wanna rip it out. If it's not that much work, I don't know what to do. Here's the thing, is I just don't like wasting time when I'm knitting because knitting takes forever. And I just hate ripping back and I don't like spending all this time like figuring stuff out and, um, but I probably should do that. I don't know. Does anyone knit the ribbings after? Is this normal for it to be this wide? Because I'm just, I'm, I'm worried I'm gonna knit this whole color work yoke and this whole sweater and then it's gonna be too wide at the top. And I don't really know what I would do. I thought maybe what I could do is like cut out a repeat, like steak it and just cut out a repeat along the back. But that's like chance in it, you know? I don't know. I think I'm gonna knit a little bit more before I make a decision and then I'll, I'll just rip it out and I'll be annoyed. And I, I'll put it away for a year. I do like this project, I think. It's kind of annoying to knit right now because I'm at this section where you have to catch your floats and I hate catching my floats. It's the worst. It makes everything, it takes so much longer. And I don't know. I like this project and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. But this is my sweater project right now. And I really just wanted to catch something on quickly to have another project in the works and this is just like not a fast project and I'm just like I don't really have anything to knit on right now that I'm excited to knit on. I don't know. So this is my whip, my sweater whip that I love so much. My next work in project, my next work in progress is not super exciting. Well it is, but it's just a sock. But it's a fun sock. So this, uh, whoops, let me get that thread from my sock trim off of there. This, uh, sock or colorway is from Mustache Yarns and it's called, um, Great Smoky Mountains, I believe, or Blue Ridge Mountains. It has the name of some mountains. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so uh, mustache yarn, they do self-striping uh, sock yarn, and this is self-striping. 
I did not knit or weave in all of those ends because that's not who I am. And I finished one sock. Um, I did an afterthought heel on it just because, like, I don't know. I just wanted to keep the stripes going, and I didn't want to have to worry about a heel flap and gusset working into that. And I know people do a heel flap and gusset with self-striping yarn, but I just didn't want to chance it. So um, the heels and toes are done in Madeline Tosh colorway that I can't remember. Um, but when they had their big sale, I bought um, a bunch of mini skeins to do the heels and toes of my socks in. And this was one of them. Um, so yeah, there's not really much to say about this sock. Um, it's fun knitting with self-striping yarn because it you just want to keep knitting until the next stripe. Um, but then I knit like the one sock and I'm like, yeah, that was nice. That was fun. And now I kind of don't want to knit the next one. Um, but I'm going to, I just haven't done it for a while. I think I'm going to end up finishing it because this sweater is being such a pain in the patootie. And that's not the word I wanted to say, but I'll keep it clean. Um, so my other sock is just, uh, I think I just finished ribbing. It, what's nice about doing self-striping sock, like knitting with self-striping yarn, is that you can just hold your yarn up to the other sock and compare. Um, the mustache yarn, they do, they send you a skein, and it looks like a regular skein, but it's split into two, so each uh, little ball, um, when you wind it up, they're identical. So you get two matching socks, which is nice. And... Probably not something I would take the time to do if I were just doing it myself, but this is my sock project for the moment, and I'm probably going to knit on this a little bit more because, I don't know, I think I just need to cast on another sweater. I feel like I'm just not in the headspace for this sweater right now, but here's the thing is that I want this sweater for the winter. I just, I'm not in the color work mood right now. But everything else that I'm knitting, like that I have planned, I don't know. It's just like the yarn, that sweater is on, the needle is a little bit too small, or the cable is too small, and it's like the yarn is really like toothy before it's blocked, and it's just like annoying to knit with. But now that I'm looking at it, I feel like it would look, if the pink were like a dark purple, I think it will look a lot nicer, and I know that new color palette that they came out with, they do have a dark purple, and I'm wondering if, if I should abandon ship. I don't know. I was supposed to be talking about this sock. This sock is super cute, and I like it a lot. Um, I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't really, I'm not the person who wears their socks out and about just because I feel like they never fit in my shoes. Does anyone else have this problem of their hand-knit socks not fitting into their shoes? I don't know. So I normally wear them at home, but I know that wearing hand-knit socks with your clogs is a thing, and I have recently become a purveyor, or not a purveyor, but... Um, an owner of some fine clogs. I finally bought some briar clogs after many years of wanting them and not wanting to spend the money. But I finally have clogs and I, I, they're big enough that I can wear socks with them. So that's why I knit those pink socks was because they're kind of a little more plain and subdued and they would fit into my clogs and look good with them too. Uh, maybe these aren't clog socks. But this is a finished sock and I do want to finish the other one. So I don't know. Who knows what I'm going to knit on next. I don't know if it's going to be that sweater. But anyway, here is a finished sock. And here is a sock that will probably be finished by the next podcast. So my only stash acquisition. Well, it's not my only. Um, but the stash acquisition I'm going to show you this week is just the one. And they are these beautiful colors. <gasps> Gasp. Look at these. Look at how lovely these are. So I was enticed into buying this yarn 
from Stephen and Penelope, which is a yarn shop in Amsterdam, and it's owned by Stephen West. And I actually went to Amsterdam <laughs> when I studied abroad, and I can't believe I didn't go here. I knew it existed, but I just didn't go there. Same thing with um, Retrosaria. I went to Portugal, but I didn't go to Retrosaria. Um, anyway, so this is, I believe, okay, it's Finnish. It's a Finnish wool, and it is a single ply, but it's not super washed. It's just like natural wool. It still has a little bit of like a, what is the name? I think they call it chaff. Maybe that's not the word. Or maybe I said something embarrassing and said, but I think it's called chaff. <laughs> so it's like the vegetable matter. It's straw. There's like still straw in the yard. I like it. I think it adds character. Um, but uh, so it's breed specific and it's hand dyed. Like it's um, like kind of indie dyed. And I am just such a sucker for anything breed specific. I don't know why. I think it's just because, like, there are just so many options. Like, there's so many different breeds of sheep, and I just want to try them all. It's like, I just have this weird thing with things that have a lot of options, like jelly bellies. There's so many options. I just like that. Um, like, I love going to the museum as a kid because, like, you know, you'll be in that room with, like, the, the butter, all those little different butterflies all pinned to, you know, the display and I just like a lot of options like those are my favorite books as a kid were books I remember I had this nature book that just had um, it would like fold out and it was um, it just had so much detail so uh, that's where that's where I'm going to say that um, this obsession with breed specific wool comes from so this has a nice little halo on it it is not I mean, I don't know if it's next to skin soft because it's not super washed and it's not like merino. Um, it's not super uncomfortable just sitting here. But it, this is probably going to be a sweater. So I bought this because Andrea Mowry posted a picture of a striped sweater on Instagram. And I saw this yarn and I loved it, but I didn't know what I would do with it. And so, um, it turns out this is fingering weight. Her sweater is going to be in sport weight, but I think they're close enough that I could still do it. Um, my only thing is that the color palette is a little bit different than what it looked like online. So this was supposed to be a coral color, and this is very much like a dusty pink in person. It was much oranger. It was like an orangey pink. It was really nice. And I think this color, which is called copper, was a little bit orangier too. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. These three are lovely together. And even like, I don't know. Like if I take away this color, this is great too. Um, I feel like I just have too many different colors. Like when these are going to be like similar, it worked. But now that they're not, I don't know if this one works with it. Or even like, that looks good. So I think maybe I'll keep this one. And I think I'll add a lighter pink skein of something. Um, I think that's going to work really well with all of these um, and make the pattern palette more cohesive. Um, I do this thing when I'm picking yarn colors where I use, I think it's called Photo Grid. And, you know, it's that old app that everyone used to use, like when Facebook first came out. And, um, but what you can do is you can create grids. Um, just like on your phone and you can like drop in different pictures and that's what I use when I'm like trying to put together a color palette. Um, I just take screenshots of all the colors and then I put them all on the photo grid so I can see them all next to each other. And I do the same thing when I'm uh, picking like fabric for bags. I put the top and the bottom on a grid just so I can see them and it helps so much. Like if you're not sure, do this because it helps a ton to just kind of like you think it looks good, but then you put it in uh, the grid and it doesn't look quite how you wanted it to. So that is my word to the wise. So the last order of business for the podcast is a little uh, shop update. So I haven't updated my shop in a little while. Um, 
COVID kind of like ruined everything, and I was I was most likely going to show, um, well, not show, but uh, be a vendor at another show or two over the summer, and everything got canceled. Um, so I just kind of been have had fabric that was languishing, and and I wanted to do another update, um, and here we are. <laughs> So I have some fabrics that I put together and they just kind of reminded me of um, like this this time of the summer, you know, high, high summer. And so this collection, I suppose, is unofficially named uh, Summer in the Garden. Um, and they're just, they all kind of remind me of like, a, like, a, like a UK summer. Um, there's one print that very specifically <laughs> It's very UK, um, but anyway, uh, so I'm going to release these bags in uh, over, <sighs> I don't know, maybe a month. So they're not all going to be released at once. So um, the next shop up update is going to be uh, Friday, August 28th. Um, I'm not sure what time of the day, so I'm just going to say five o'clock. Central time, which I believe is the time that Cleveland is in. I don't know why I never know that. What time is it? <laughs> um, I will post on Instagram. But it is for sure Friday, August 28th. The time is to be determined. Anyway, I just wanted to hop on here and show you the three prints that will be available um, in that update. So the first one will be in the shop, um, and this is called Cottage Wallpaper. Um, this print is actually uh, like um, a rendering of like a vintage uh, wallpaper. Um, and it just reminded me of like wallpaper you would find in a cute little like English cottage. And this is a large bag that I'm holding up. Um, I, the medium bag is very popular. Um, it's a little bit smaller than this. It's what I like for socks. Um, but I typically knit larger projects, and so this is kind of my favorite size for a variety of projects, is the large size. Um, and then if you're knitting sweaters, you can fit a sweater in here if you don't mind it being a little tight. Um, well, it just depends what weight you're knitting, because if you're knitting a fingering weight, you could probably fit it in here. But I do have a bag that's bigger than this, and um, that fits a sweater most definitely. It's quite a bit bigger. Um, but this is the size that I like the best. Let me just show you that print a little bit better. It has this really cute red gingham on the bottom. I just love gingham. I don't know why. It's just so cute. Um, so this is one of the ones that will be in there on Friday. This one, oh my gosh. I can't even remember where I found this fabric, but I saw it on another podcast. Um, it is just so, so cute. Like, if this is not scream English countryside, I don't know what does. But it's kind of, um, to me, it reminds me of, like, the English countryside. Um, with all these cute little motifs, it has this little fox. Oh, my gosh. I have a thing for foxes. Um, but the blue and white's kind of, like, Scandinavian. Um, either way, I just think this bag is so stinking cute. Um, so, yeah, there will be a few of these in the shop, too. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at these little ducks. Oh, this bag is so cute. I actually bought extra of this fabric um, to make myself something uh, maybe like a makeup bag or something for our trip to Portugal that never happened, so... I'm glad I got to sew with it. Made me a little bit happy. Uh, but yeah, so the, this one will also be in the shop on Friday. And this is the last print that will be on the shop on Friday. And this one, I just love so much. And I said that about the other two, but for real, look at this. Oh my gosh. I think I'm going to call this Sugarloaf hill because there is this hill 
there aren't really mountains in Ireland, but it's a hill in Wicklow, which is south of Dublin. And there was this one time when I was in Ireland and we were driving through the countryside and um, it was just so picturesque. And it was taken near Sugarloaf Hill. Um, and that's what this bag reminds me of. Look at all the little sheep. Like these little, you can see a sheep there. It's just so cute. I think there's a sheep dog right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I just love this bag. It just reminds me of my time in Ireland so much. Um, everything really looks like that. Obviously it's not purple, but um, everything is just so picturesque, just like that. So these will be in the shop as well. And again, this is my large size bag. And if you want any of these bags, they will be in the shop next Friday, which is not going to be next Friday when you see it, but it will, this podcast should hopefully be out before the 28th. Um, and this is just uh, the first three in the little uh, summer gardens collection that I'm going to be um, coming out with. So this brings us to the end of another episode of Speckled Red Knits. Um, I have no idea how long this podcast is. I always aim for like half an hour to 45 minutes and so and it, it really varies widely around the time frame. So you are either uh, in for a short treat or in for a longer spell. But we are near the end and as promised, I wanted to do another giveaway this week. Um, so I'm going to be giving away this skein of yarn. Ooh. So this is by Gage Dye Works, and they do really neat self-striping yarn. They're a Canadian company. Um, their yarn is super hard to get. There's a colorway that they had. It, I want to say it was like called Lazy Saturday, um, and they came out with it maybe two years ago, and I've never been able to get it. Um, so I did their, I believe it was their June Sock Club. Um, and their June Sock Club is where you just get one skein of fingering weight yarn and they include a little pattern with it and um, it's a total mystery what the yarn will look like and what the pattern to knit the yarn in will look like. They do a lot of self stripping yarns but also kind of pattern yarns. Um, so if you look on the tag you can see it, the little picture of it. Um, it's kind of like a really long gradient and you do this little color work bit at the top. But here's the yarn. So just so you can see it, the colors that are in there, it's really lovely. Um, it is done in an 80-20 base, but it's not quite as plump. It's not plump like an 80-20. It's kind of just a titch thicker than like a normal 75-25. Um, but there are instructions. Um, to download the pattern to knit this exact sock. There's enough yarn in here for two socks. Um, and I'm just really excited to give this away to one of my viewers because you've all been so kind leaving comments and subscribing. Um, I just love reading your comments. So to enter, I'm going to link our uh, Ravelry group below which will be made by the time this airs. Um, and I'll put a little uh, giveaway post in there for you to comment on. I think it's a lot easier to do the giveaways in Ravelry than on YouTube because I kind of have to wait for you to reach out. I can't reach out to you. Um, so there will be a, a thread in Ravelry. And I would love if you commented um, and just left an idea of if we did a knit along for the podcast, um, what kind of knit along would you like to do? Um, I kind of have some ideas in mind, uh, but I w would really like to do a uh, knit along. It's coming up on, you know, um, the fall and really prime knitting season. So I think it would be really fun for us to all do um, a knit along. And I would just love to hear what everyone's thoughts are on uh, just some ideas. So just comment um, on Ravelry and let me know what you'd like to see as a knit along this beautiful skin of yarn. It's been so lovely talking to you. I don't know when the podcast again. It should be in like maybe three weeks. Um, but hopefully I'll 
I'll have an update about the terrible sweater I'm knitting. <laughs> and um, hopefully there will be a couple more works in progress uh, by the time I podcast again for me to show you. Alright, take care and happy knitting!